Our next speakers are um, Jeff Thomas and uh, Anthony Pritchard from Welsh Government and uh, Emrys Jones from Capgemini. They're going to talk us through a case study, Successful Digital Delivery at Rural Payments Wales. Thank you. Thank you, David. Yeah, as uh, David said, I'm uh, Emrys Jones uh, from Capgemini. Uh, we were global systems integrators and, um, and we are sponsors of Digital 2015. Uh, we've been working with RPW for a long time. I'll stay near the bike, sorry. <laughs> we've been working with RPW for a long time, and uh, as David says, we're going to, uh, Jeff, Auntie, and I are going to talk about the successes that we've had uh, at Rural Payments Wales over the last few years. Um, we've just got one panel of um, sports legends, so we moved to another panel of sports legends. Um, it was interesting, I suppose, some of the stuff we saw this morning, mind around, um, even though it's about sport. And it's, you know, the, the cycling girls were talking about getting on the uh, podium. I guess, I guess when it comes to rural payments, wheels and payments, we, we want to be the gold medalists of, um, of what we do. And we certainly do things which are quite sporty. And Anthony's laughing there because I'm stretching the analogy. But, uh, <laughs> um, so yes, I'll be joined by, let's press the next button, by Jeff Thomas, who is the head of uh, IT at RPW, and Anthony Pritchard, the um, program manager for Cap Reform. Okay, and... Um, and Jeff will tell us a bit about the background of RPW and some of the business challenges that we face, and Anthony will talk about the uh, stakeholder challenges and engagement, and then I'll come back and do a few of the uh, technology uh, challenges we face and how we solve them. Okay, Jeff. Thanks, MS. Right, so uh, I just want to give you a little bit of background to, um, to what uh, Rural Payments Wales does. Uh, Rural Payments Wales is the payment agency for Wales. We're authorised by um, uh, Europe uh, to pay out money out of the Common Agricultural Policy. Um, and we pay out over £300 million pounds to, every year to farmers uh, and, and forestry and, and other sort of uh, commercial enterprises like that in support of the Welsh rural economy. So it's quite important for Wales that you know, this money is paid out. Um, and we're responsible for making sure this money is paid out properly. Um, if we fail to make this, these payments properly, um, there are potential for um, uh, fines and, and uh, other serious issues which will obviously impact uh, the money that the Welsh Government has to spend on, on other things. And also, um, if this isn't done correctly, then farmers themselves can get penalised and that has an impact on their businesses and their livelihoods. So it's quite important that uh, this is all done correctly. Um, our business is quite um, complex. Uh, it's going to be difficult in the short period of time we've got to explain how complex it is. Um, but we need to take my word for it, I think. Um, we do a lot of stuff. We've got a lot of uh, land that in, in Wales. Uh, we've got some 600,000 parcels of land on different farms that we manage and monitor uh, and people make claims against. Uh, we use satellite imagery to track use of growing of crops and check that claims are correct. It's, it's quite, a, quite a big, complex process. Uh, and what we do as, as Rural Payments Wales in Wales is what's done by uh, the Rural Payments Agency in England and Natural England together. We do the role of both of those, those, those groups of people. Um, moving on from there, uh, there's a new cap reform round being, uh, being introduced. Um, as you probably know, um, and you will have seen in many things in the press uh, about how difficult and complex cap reform is. Um, the regs are um, uh, very, very difficult to explain and understand. Uh, they cover farming from you know, olive groves in uh, the bottom of Italy, uh, reindeer farming in Finland, uh, and of course the green, green grass of home as well. So we, we've got that wide range of regulations to cover many different farming practices which we have to encapsulate in our systems and make it simple enough for um, farmers to make claims. Um, the other issue with the EU, um, as you probably all recognise, is it's quite a, um, a committee-based um, decision-making body. Um, so many of the regulations are subject to change. We get a lot of last-minute change, so which you have to deal with. Um, and you know that's quite fundamental to um, making sure this is all right. Um, Moving on from that then, uh, we, we were looked to sort of try and modernise what we were doing, you know, using paper applications to, uh, to move to online. Uh, very important that we do this um, for, uh, for various different reasons, obviously uh, economies of scale uh, and cost, and uh, make sure we're moving ahead with the times. And 
the, the issue we've always had is that you know, our, our stakeholders are farmers, the business is farming. Um, most of them, or many of them, are not sort of uh, very digitally aware. Um, we have some big businesses, but we have a lot of very small farming uh, uh, organizations, which are just a couple of brothers up in the hill. And, and they don't have the big um, uh, sort of offices dealing with all the complex regulations that have to be, uh, have to be processed. So what we're looking to do is to produce systems that um, uh, make it easy for farmers to claim and to avoid them getting, uh, making sort of simple errors um, that will result in um, penalties for them and loss of money to um, uh, the Welsh economy. So moving on to uh, some of the challenges, um, we're looking to migrate uh, from a paper system to a fully online system. Um, and the need to sort of bring the um, farming industry along with us uh, to try and help them modernize as well. Um, what, what we found is that um, where they've tried this in uh, other areas of the EU um, and across other UK territories, the take up of um, online services has been quite poor for, um, from the farming community. And we recognize this and we look to try and uh, make sure that the um, the stakeholder engagement that we had with our, with our stakeholders and the farmers is, is good and that um, we can bring them along with the process and, and take them along with it, which I think we'll talk about a little bit more. Um, the other part of this is making sure that um, uh, when, we, when we did this within Welsh Government, it was quite a big step forward. Uh, we, we've got the biggest sort of transactional service in Welsh Government. We had to put a lot of infrastructure in place to make sure that was all working, so quite a challenge for us. Um, with all the security and uh, technology we had to implement. So, final slide for me. Um, this is the background to where we started. Um, lots of paper forms, long lead times, printing forms, uh, producing them for farmers. Lots of resources to actually scan those forms back in again and correct errors from handwritten entries. Um, and that delayed processing, delayed making payments to farmers, etc., etc. Uh, the, the forms themselves, when done on paper, are quite complex. The regulations are complex, therefore the forms have to be complex. Uh, and uh, the move to um, an online service uh, would make those forms easier to complete because it guides the farmer through the process, um, which again, these guys will talk to you about in a little bit. So that's the backdrop, uh, background to our uh, digital ambitions. And I shall uh, hand you over to Anthony for the next bit. Hi. Um, so I'm going to talk to you about sort of the stakeholder issues that we had for um, online. And as, um, as Jeff alluded to earlier, that the earlier that, uh, farming industry was pretty slow to take up online services. And it's quite understandable. The very nature of farming is out in the fields, dealing with animals, dealing with the land. They haven't got much call for um, using online services, using email, everything you'd expect um, sort of normal businesses to, to use. So, so that was our first sort of... Uh, our first challenge. Secondly, as again Jeff uh, indicated earlier, previously um, other UK pay agencies have tried to go online, had a very slow take up. Um, places like England and Scotland had taken about five years to get up to about a 60% take up mark, and it was very hard work for them. Um, and they, they, they struggled with a lot of their engagement. And also in other European countries, what tended to happen, they decided to implement an, an agency model where they would say, well, let's not get the farmers to do it. We'll pay somebody to do it on their behalf. So therefore, they didn't have to worry about uh, whether their systems were complex or not because they just train up agents to do it on their behalf. Now, we didn't have that luxury, so we had the challenge of, of trying to make this as simple as possible. Again, farmers, you know, they, they've got limited digital skills um, and they've got limited um, digital literacy, but also literacy as well. So we had to bear that in mind. Again, the um, farmers are geographically remote from where, um, from sort of main business areas. And that meant that they were difficult to reach both physically and in the sense of digitally in that broadband was less available. So those are the, some of the other challenges that we had to, to tackle. And I guess finally, the, as Jeff sort of mentioned in several of his slides, this is a really complex application process. So the danger was that if we added a technology layer onto it, we'd make it more complex. And, and therefore the technology would see, be seen as the complication rather than actually it's the whole pro, 
it's the whole scheme applications that are the problem. So we want to try and use that to our advantage and actually sort of say, well, going online makes the system simpler rather than more complex. So that's what we were trying to do. So how do we go about it? Well, one of the advantages that we had in Wales, a lot of farmers use farming unions and agents. We weren't quite sure the percentage, but we, we thought it was between 40 and 60%. So what we decided to do was let's target those people, let's get them to help us engage with the farmers. And therefore, we can take a large chunk of our potential customers and, get, and so that, um, to sort of engage with them. So we established um, two very important groups. One was a stakeholder management group, which was really to get the key players within the farming industry, mainly the unions, the agents, um, the, a lot of the county associations that um, had a lot of members, and got them to help us with the general high-level principles of how we'd do this, so that we could sort of get their buy-in to make sure that we were delivering something that they'd want to use. And then secondly, we set up a, a user working group, and that was really important for us to sort of understand how farmers think, how they do things, and actually get them to test out our system. So those, those two groups were what we used to help us build and develop the system. And from the very beginning, what we, what we decided to do was get them really involved in the whole thing. So from the design, to how the screens look, to how the things that we were asking them to do. So every single point within the process, we were confident that it's something that they wanted to do. And what that sort of did for us in the beginning was a lot of work. That was a lot of work for us to, every time that we did something, we had to go and present it to our stakeholders, get their feedback, and then, in a lot of cases, change what we, we did. But what was quite important about it was that we, we, we finally realised that we were trying to make it more complicated. So the stakeholders kept us quite honest, really, in that they, they allowed us to sort of, um, where we wanted to use complex terminology, they said, no, keep it simple. Where we wanted them to do multiple things, no, they just said, just do one or two things, and you can sort out the rest. And, and as a result, we, we got into a very nice routine of us as actually not trying to second guess what our customers wanted in that a part of our whole development process was, well, we don't know what those particular things we are, what we need to do. We're not going to make, we're not going to try and um, guess what we need to do. We'll just use our user working group and go and tell them, well, this is what we're trying to do. How do you want us to do it? So rather than us leading the development, they were, they were actually quite instrumental in, in sort of filling in a lot of the gaps in the, um, in the development that, that sometimes we just guess and, and not always get it right. So that was, um, so that was really sort of, um, that was very helpful. The, the other thing that we did with um, the stakeholders is that we sort of at the very beginning, we did a long sort of, um, we planned what we were going to do over a sort of two and a half year period. Now, we did that to sort of eliminate some of the technical risk because there's a lot of new technical things that we were doing, but also to um, forewarn them, I guess, of the things that we were trying to do and actually get them sort of to buy into the whole process so that when we got to, the, to do various things, they were ready to do it and they were, they were part of the... Um, development of how we got there. And so, and so they, had a, they had a real stake in what we were doing. And then we used those same stakeholders then to pilot the system. And during the pilot period, we learned a lot about some of the technical issues that we had and some of the usability issues that we had. So that when, so we could iron out some of what were small problems during the pilot, but had that um, gone on into the, um, into the full rollout, would have caused us quite serious user problems. So that was really useful. Um, getting them involved in all those stages. So they had a real sense of ownership of, um, of what we were doing. So what was the success? Well, um, as I said, the stakeholders became advocates of what we were doing. They, they felt the system belonged to them as well, to, as well as to us. And because we used the farming unions and uh, a lot of the agencies, it actually, they, they were starting to tell people how good the system was. They were starting to tell people this is what they should um, be using. Partly because they had involvement in developing it, but part, but to a greater degree, that by these eight, by the unions and the agents using the system, it saved them a whole lot of time. It reduced some of the errors that they could make. It gave them a bit more um, satisfaction. So it, it was very much a win-win in that situation. And, and because of that sort of because of their involvement, it gave us a lot of credibility. We didn't have to go out and tell. Um, farmers to use the system, the farming unions would. They, they would tell them, yeah, we've tested it and it's great, it, it helps you. Yeah, they were telling them why they should be using it, not us, which was, re which was really helpful in getting the message across. And to the extent that we didn't have to do um, a massive amount of publicity for it because we, the farming unions would just say, can you write us an article and we'll put it in our newsletter or our paper or our journal or we'll put it online because 
they really wanted people to use it because they'd been part of the whole process. And because we had then a very close relationship with um, the farming union, when things did go wrong, um, they would give us you know, pretty rapid feedback and we could fix things very quickly rather than um, problems escalating and getting out of hand. We were able to you know, resolve them very quickly and, you know, and learn from what had happened. And that then minimised any major problems we had to the system. So, so that sort of really uh, paid dividends for us. But now I'm going to hand over to Emrys, and he's going to uh, talk about the techie stuff. Not too techie, not too techie, those who know me. Um, so so um, we've heard already that we were building something quite complex, um, and we were doing it for the first time in Welsh Government. There were a uh, transactional system, 18,000 customers. Um, so what we've built is, is a portal, an RPW online portal, and, and an application grants process. In, and we have to take uh, you know, the stakeholders' views on board, and we have to build, manage that complexity. So there are a number of challenges that we faced. Um, we just going around that wheel, I guess. We've got a simplicity there. It's, it's simplifying that complexity. So back to Anthony's point around stakeholders' engagement, we had to make sure that what we built was usable. Um, it is complex, particularly the application process. It really, really is complex. We have customers who range from, let's say, small, small customers with only one field to some customers who have over a thousand land parcels. The form is, if you, if you were to print it out on paper, it would be hundreds of pages long, and the rules behind it is very complex. But using that stakeholder mechanism that he described for us, we, we kept engaging, and we had to build that simplicity in. Um, so, you know, we didn't build a white telephone and it was you. So clear language, clear signposting. And, and that takes time. It's, it's, you know, it, the easiest thing to do from an IT project was to build something, get it out there, but it wouldn't have been used. It wouldn't have been successful. And it has been successful. You know, 70, nearly 75% take up. Um, so I think it's about keeping the customer ha at the heart of what we're doing. And, you know, relating it again back to the sporting thing of earlier, it doesn't matter whether your, your, your customer is Warren Gatlin or is Chris Coleman, you know, they need the right information. Our customer um, you know, needs the right information they need to complete their applications. Um, again, Jeff has touched on um, complexity and changing re requirements. Yes, we are working in the uh, with European Union legislation, which can change. It's done by committee. It changes to the last minute. Obviously, from an IT delivery point of view, from a program point of view, we all like nice phase plans. We like things to be delivered when we want them to. But So we have to accommodate and work in a flexible way to accommodate those changes. And that's down to great people. It's down to the way we work. It's down to close engagement with the business. It's down to close engagement with the stakeholders. It's, 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 down, it's down to the processes we adopt and so agile methodologies of, of, of always showing what we're doing. And yes, it, 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 it takes time, um, but it, it, reaps, it reaps rewards. Um, and changes don't only come from the, um, from the EU and the change in business requirements. Of course, they come from technology. When we started the journey in 2011, 12, you know, when we started put, going online, your laptops were far more uh, uh, the vehicle of choice, I think, we were aiming at to get people to, to go online and use the system. Um, but of course, over that years, we've seen the, um, you know, the increase of smart devices, mobile phones, uh, iPads, etc. We've had some... Um, you know, some customers and somebody in the room knows what I'm talking about. You know, wouldn't not do the application online unless it was on an iPad. Um, so technology changed as we were doing it. We um, we had a requirement in the first first year that we needed an offline solution. So we built a solution that enabled customers to take their form offline um, again, because that that was the model we thought we had. Um, and again, that's changed over time. So during the second year, we moved from a, an Adobe. Uh, form print off to offline solution to something which was, was always online um, and it was filled in that way etc and and um, again you all got um, stuff on your seat today around um, digital broadband and of course that's changed in Wales over the two wheels you know the access to broadband now is is far greater than it was when we started two years ago there's still more to be done uh, but but that just gives you a, a, an example of some of the change things that change around us um, I've got devices and browsers there. Again, I've touched on that al already. Um, but there are a plethora of devices. We can't possibly 
Oh, we, we could try. But, uh, there are a plethora of devices, and obviously what we want to do, putting the customer first, is to put them at the heart of, of, of allowing them to be able to fill their form in. Um, but we have to be balanced. So we, in the first year that we started, we weren't quite sure what browsers the people were going to be. We had industry standards. But again, we didn't have that real data. So again, relating it back to what we've heard today, we now have real data using analytics tools. We know what devices people are using. We know what pros are people using. So when we target our testing, we target it at those, um, at those top 80%, if you like. Uh, quickly moving on, because I've got a red flashing light in front of me, talking too much. Um, it's a techie thing we're talking about, this, this part of the talk. Uh, we could spend all day talking on each, of the, on each one of those um, pie segments. Um, but applic application integration and data integration, the whole architecture of building a solution. We're building a solution um, which has to be robust and needs to be the same for everyone. And, and as, again, Jeff moved it to we were the first person doing it. We had to build all the infrastructure. We had to build integration with things like the government gateway. We were doing that, um, building on some previous experiences. Um, but one thing we learned, what we did have, we'd, we'd had a very successful internal house system doing the back-end processing for many years in the paper channel. Um, when you go online, that shines a light on on all, all your data, all your processes, etc. And again, these are things that uh, we have to take on board. And again, conscious light performance is another pie segment. Um, there's three elements there. It's obviously that the solution is fit for purpose. It responds accurately. A lot, a lot of testing goes into that to make that happen. Um, but again, when, you, when, when we're building online system, there is a lot of complexity, as we've said over and over again. We can't put all that complexity online. It won't work for the customer. It won't be performant, etc. Right. Um, I think we've touched on a lot, though. Just encapsulated really in one slide there. Um, why we have been successful? Um, I said we have been successful. We've got 75% of the recent round of applications we've done online, which is a fantastic result. And, and the reason for that is is probably all of those boxes and things I've touched on earlier. It's we understood what we were taking on to start, or we understood part of what we were taking on at the start, and um, so that focus, the recognition of the complexity, we've got a very experienced team, we've got agile approaches, stakeholder engagement, strong architectural foundation, etc., etc. And as just wrap up slide from you, Anthony, to yes. finish off. I'm sorry for eating into your time. Yeah, just really to summarise why we think it's successful. I mean, first thing we did, we delivered it on time and to budget, which I think is always uh, overlooked in a lot of programmes. Um, the, the system actually coped. Um, one of the, you know, doing this for the first time, you don't know how many people are going to try and hit the button on the last day, and uh, we, we were fortunate that we put a lot of work into into that, and, it, and the system didn't fall over. In fact, it was there was no news about the system, and that, I suppose that, that for us is really good news. Um, as Emrys has said, you know, we had 72% of people went online um, with our SAF this year. Now, that's the highest of any paid agency within the UK. I mean, unfortunately, England couldn't go online this year, which is really unfortunate for them. But Wales, uh, we, we sort of surpassed any figures by any other paid agency. Uh, you know, and the digital assistance program that we put in place to help customers has worked really well. It's, um, it's, we've learned a lot from how customers want us to help them. So we thought they'd need somebody to help them complete the application, whereas actually what they do is come into our office, we start them off and they go home and finish the application off. And all, that, all the things that we've learned from that has allowed us to sort of um, think about now how we're going to digitally assist customers next year when the aspiration is for everyone to go online. And, and finally, there's a lot of benefits from this um, from what we've done. Not only have we sort of eliminated a lot of the paper, we've streamlined our processes, we've, um, we, we've reduced a lot of um, admin that no, no, no longer needs to take place because it, um, a lot of the sort of mundane validation of forms has, has been eradicated. And, and also we're finding lots of other benefits that we've uh, found from the system where farmers are saving time. It's taking them less time to do things. They don't have to travel to our offices anymore. Um, they're able to access their maps online and, and not have to go out in the field and actually look where things are. So all of those things are sort of additional benefits that we found from this and really just allows us to sort of uh, take the next steps now to our um, to the, the rest of CAP reform where we're now going to have to create geospatial forms and, and all those sorts of things, which uh, I'm not going to go on about because I know our time is up. But uh, thank you very much.